Hi, my name is Ashray here with Fun FTC in at the Maryland Tech Invitational, and we are here with Peter and Steven from Gluten Free Team Number One 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 Five. Uh, so over here, they're going to show us their World Championship robot and sort of walk us through some of the really cool things on the robot. How are you guys doing today? Uh, doing very well. It was a late night the past couple of nights, and we're a bit tired. We've got a long drive ahead, but it's going well. All right. So, um, Stephen, how would you start off by talking to, about some of the really cool parts of your robot? So probably the coolest part of our robot is how we string the intake. Um, this is one of the core design features of our robot, as it has to take a lot of shock loads inside the crater when battling other robots. And then it also has to be able to move very quickly so that we can get our cycle times down. So the way, one of the ways we accomplish this is by actually double stringing it off of one spool. And what this means is that the left and the right sides each have their own um, extend and retract strings. So that way we get an even drive and even force. And this helps prevent torquing on the slides. Um, and we, we also have redundancy in case a string breaks. So the way this works is um, it's continuously routed and all four strings return to the back to this spool down here. Now, the way the strings don't wrap over each other is we actually have them on separate levels. You can see there's a stack of pulleys here and on the other side as well. The top pulleys are for the extend strings and you can see it routes around later to the slides. And then the bottom strings are for the retract strings which route directly to the final stage. So this way we're able to keep them from winding over each other when they wind on the common section of the pulley so that we can run it all on one pulley and save a lot of space that way. Amazing design. And I know this is a really popular question, but how did you get those slides so fast? How did I get the rev slides so fast? Yes. Um, so, I mean, A, we use a 3.7 and a 2-inch spool, so you get a really high tangent velocity. And then to actually get the slides themselves smooth, um, we actually picked this trick up from Crack and Pinion 8680. Um, what they did is they didn't use the middle screw and the rev sliders. Um, so this gives them a lot more play. You can see it in our design. This can wobble a ton, and you'll see it on the field. It actually slows us down sometimes. Um, so that means that it has a lot more play. It can slide a lot more freely. So as long as it's not oscillating back and forth, we can drive it really fast because there's very little friction. So the way we compensate for this is at the bottom when we need precision, we have these separate bearing rails. Um, this keeps it from wobbling at the bottom so we can make the exchange accurately and so we reap the benefits of not having the middle screw in the slider. Awesome. And I see you guys have some odometry modules there. Uh, Peter, would you like to talk a little bit about uh, the odometry methods that you created? Sure. Um, so this year we changed our calculations to be more precise than they ever were before. Um, and I think this is also happening in the library of Roadrunner. They're changing over too. Basically, before this, we were assuming that between each update, our path followed by the robot was a triangle. So that's not very accurate because it, it assumes that we're traveling in straight lines everywhere. And the less times you update your code per second, the more inaccuracies you're gonna get. So what we do is uh, between each update, we assume the robot travels in an arc. And this is so much more of a reasonable assumption because the motor powers, that's what the robot does when the motor powers are constant, which they basically are the more you zoom it in. So with that odometry, um, we were getting like plus or minus like four centimeters in a match and maybe like a degree or two depending on uh, what movements we did. It's basically lossless. It's, it's, it's insane once you get up to this little give in the system. Like I can't, there's no give here. I can't even demonstrate anything. So. That's, that's part of the precision here and just the fine tuning we've gone to to get this positioning calculation so precise. Um, another thing Steven did that's actually mechanical is he puts these standoffs stand here and those prevent um, the robot from driving up the crater because they, the crater will hit here and that stops the wheels from getting on them. And if the wheels get on the crater, then we lift up the odometry wheels. And if we do that too much, then they'll spin and we lose our position. So. That makes it extremely hard to play defense, no matter how you go at us. There's just, they'll always track. There's, there's no way to, to go about it. Amazing design, guys. You guys are in elimination matches. What's your status there? Um, so we're the number one seed, and we picked um, 8393, which no one had heard about. So I'm pretty happy I could throw off everyone's line selections at least a little bit. And, oh, yeah? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys again, and good luck for elimination matches. Thank, thank you. So Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now.
Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. 